good evening sir my name is simi my question is why are the other ladies not allowed to divorce their husbands in islam first of all the question that why aren't the ladies allowed to divorce their husband as far as divorce is concerned sister broadly you can categorize divorce into five categories one is by mutual consent of the husband and wife both first category second category unilaterally by the will of the husband third category that if it is mentioned in the nikah nama when a woman is marrying a man if she mentions the contract by default the authority is given to the man in the quran why i'll come to it later on but in the nikah nama since marriage is a marital contract a woman can put down any clause in marriage which is not prohibited in the quran she can even say that i do not want my husband to take a second wife because marrying more than one wife is not compulsory in islam if the boy agrees he marries or does not marry she finds a new boy and he finds a new girl but she can put the clause that i do not want you to take a second wife as long as i am alive but you cannot put a clause which is against the quran you can't put a clause saying i don't want you to offer prayer because offering salah is compulsory you can put a clause which is optional similarly she can put a clause that i too want to give unilateral divorce it's called as salah e tawfid or isma third category fourth category is if she does not mention in the clause but yet she wants divorce she can request the husband i don't want to stay with you she can request the husband to give divorce that's called as qala and the fifth category if the husband does not agree and if the husband ill treats her she can go to the qazi she can go to the judge and she can take nikah e fask that means nullification of the marriage if the husband ill treats her does not give her a rights she can go to the judge and she can nullify the marriage so even a woman can take divorce but under normal circumstances the man has been given the authority why because in marriage the person who is the loser is the man not the woman the woman gains if you heard my talk last week on last saturday in the talk women's rights in islam subjugated or protected i mentioned that during marriage the woman is on the receiving side the quran says in surah nisa chapter 4 verse number 4 that give to the woman in marriage a marital gift mahr in marriage it is the husband who gives to the would be wife an amount a mahr and mahr can be any amount so imagine before she is married it is the duty of the man duty of the father and the brother after she is married it is the duty of the husband and the son to look after lodging boarding clothing all financial aspects and if divorce takes place it is the duty of the parents to look after her if not the parents it is the duty of the society to look after her if not the society it is the duty of the islamic state to look after her. so she is financially secured if divorce takes place the man gives the divorce he loses the mahr but the woman she is on the receiving end now she has a chance to get married once she get married she gets new mahr and the man when he has to marry another woman he has to give new mahr if the full authority is given to the woman the woman keeps on marrying and divorcing then she will keep on gaining money who is the loser is the man so almighty god even protects the man status other have to give a talk on man's rights in islam because if a divorce takes place man is more of a loser than a woman financially and otherwise woman gets protection from the family from the society from the state man doesn't so because of that allah almighty god has secured the man but yet if the woman wants she can mention the marital contract she too can give divorce or she can request divorce from the husband called as kula or if the husband ill treats she can go to a judge and she can nullify the marriage which is called as nikah e fask hope that answers the question